All right, back at the shop here, guys, and I did not record what I felt like wasn't really important the other day. So I dyed up the dash pad and the vents here for David's notch and turned out really nice. I used, because I since found out that the car was a 93 and that it had opal gray interior. So, yep, that's right. I caved and I wanted to try this out. It's really just SEM paint um, rebranded with, uh, I believe, I, I don't know. Don't quote me on that. I could be wrong. Maybe that stuff was generic. Either way, um, should do the trick, but it did not match. And it's not LMR's fault. I'm not gonna blame LMR this time. What I ended up finding out is that a lot of this interior, believe it or not, was black and then like opal and then somebody must have done like presidio like a smoke gray in it i don't know why what the reasoning is behind it so i don't have any proof but i did actually take a picture and the picture showed the different um, layers of the original black then the what would have been opal or light titanium and then um smoke gray on top of that So it just goes to show how many iterations of, you know, things that these cars have gone through. Oh, got a little bit of overspray there. Clean that up with some thinner. But um, yeah, so what ended up happening is because nothing was matching and, you know, gray is the worst guys, like in terms of trying to match the colors. So I had to redo the dash and it was an opportunity to redo the top black section here and, and try and get that cleaned up, which also meant I had to do the glove box door, the under column piece and center console. So now everything should match. Now I can go ahead and get that dash pad bolted on here and that'll allow me to um, get the dash back in. Then we can start messing around so we can get this big holly screen in. Sliced my pinky finger open pretty good earlier with the razor. I slipped and I got it. I got it good and I just put a whole bunch of pressure on it. A piece of paper towel and some uh, harness tape. So uh, we'll see how that looks later when I get home. This guy actually, it was just like a paper cut style thing. I did it a butter knife of all things. So don't mind uh, the damage that I've done to myself today on a Friday. And it's actually Cinco de Mayo, which means I'm going to be drinking margaritas later. It's going to thin out my blood, so hopefully all this stuff uh, clumps up or clots up or whatever. So I pulled the wiring out of the door, the driver's side door, because they had switches in the cluster bezel. And, you know, they derived up this custom harness here that they had with a... You know, they put a nice connector on it. You gotta give them credit in terms of, you know, what they engineered and what they came up with. Uh, the one downside is they broke off the power lock section to this switch unit. So I believe 91 through 93 is this harness is all one piece and ultimately plugs into the harness here. So they've used all of the pieces 
in a way that made everything work. The problem is this is now useless to us when we want to have power windows and a door lock switch on here. So what needs to happen is I actually need to unpin everything here and pin it on here. And then I need to repin this connector that's going to go into this harness and hopefully everything is going to work again. So it uh, kind of sucks. Uh, I know a lot of you guys really don't like wiring. This is the first time I've actually repinned one of these plates and this might look weird because the window buttons or the switches actually aren't on. You have to pop them off. Then there's little tabs in here that you need to get a pick tool and that'll allow you to you know, swap your wiring and do everything that you need to do. So that's what I'm doing right now is I'm just trying to see where everything's supposed to go on this connector on here. And as a reference, that connector actually works, oops, actually works on this guy that um, here. So that's gonna kind of be my point of reference to try and line up colors and wires and hopefully everything is going to work. So wish me luck. I'm going to time lapse this because I'm not going to go through and try and explain which every wire is because I really don't care. I'm just going to swap wire for wire and hopefully everything is going to work. So let's go. Would you look at that, David? You have power windows again. Oops. Both sides. I did notice we're missing the wire. Um, well, it's going to be on this guy, so I got to wire it back in for the power door lock. So that's going to run down along here. That side's all good to go. I just need to button up some of the connectors, wrap up the harness, and we'll put some spade connectors on the end of that guy. We'll be able to put the new Dorman door lock actuator in there. This side, I need to do some connectors and get this guy ultimately back in there. But I've figured out all the wiring. I know what needs to go where and awesome oh, these actually these windows work really good holy shit guys i have to say so these rock auto window run channel moldings um i guess these are them there there's the part number guys these go in like butter so she's foxy on instagram reached out to me a couple weeks ago and he's trying to put these in and he said, man, these aren't going in right. They look a little weird. He actually had them in backwards and we had them on a podcast um, the next week. And, you know, he was a little ashamed, but, you know, he admitted to his fault. And um, he's actually the one that put me on to these. He was said how nice once you put them on the right way that they went on. I literally ordered two sets from Rock Auto while we were doing the podcast. And um, guys, like the fit, and I forget what the name brand is of these, but you can see I'm literally just putting these on real time. Almost don't even really need the paint stick. So if you guys remember, I think it was Project Come and Take It. I put a set in that car and like they went in so easy and nice. And I didn't know what brand they were because they just ultimately, they're just in a clear plastic bag when you get them, right? But I'm wondering if these were them. 
thing is, I didn't even know that Rock Auto sold these things. That's the craziest part. Let's see here. Beautiful. Window seats beautifully. Oh yeah, we're good. Here we go, now I can go knock out that other side real quick. Window run channels will be done. Then um, dash is good to go in, finish up my wiring. Tint lady can come, get the door panels on, look at wiring up the Holly Terminator on the new screen, and um, we'll be good to go. So out with the old. Oh yeah, there we go. Boom. I love it when they aren't too, too brittle. Just easy enough so that they come out easy. Just like that. chrome door handle. You don't like that? Oh. God awful. God awful chrome don't get you home. So it's Saturday over here, I'm trying to knock out a couple last things and wrap up the wiring. One thing that I noticed when I went to get this door lock actuator, even though that the box says doorman, it is not a doorman in there. You can tell by this black top, this is actually mimics a shitty, um, like aftermarket Chinese, I'm not gonna name any names here, but um, yeah, someone pulled a fast one there. So that needs to go back because I'm down an actuator for this side, so I need to get that in there. Got the black handles on, so no more chrome. So that shit is gone and out of there. All of the wiring is finished and taped up. I'm going to see, they're missing those little brackets to hold the harness. Now the harness is out of the way here, but if I have an extra set hiding, I'll pop rivet those in, otherwise I'll probably use a tie wrap and just make sure that that's out of the way. You don't want any of your wiring getting caught on any of the regulator assembly. One tip guys, when you're doing harness work, don't cheap out on your electrical tape. This is the Scotch uh, Super 33 3M and it is super pliable. It doesn't have that cold weather effect to it. And if you've had it on for a long time, it doesn't do that stupid sticky residue where it just kind of literally gets all over you. So invest in quality electrical tape. Everything here is good to go. You can see I've got all the new switches on. So everything is looking nice and new. Same thing over here. Just gonna make sure that all this stuff is tucked up and out of the way before 
getting the door panel back on, gotta get the door speakers installed. And that'll be pretty much it for the doors, thankfully. Then I can check that off the list. This one's actually got the door lock actuator in it already. So almost there. Then we'll get the dash in and start working on the holly screen. Alright guys, so making some really good headway on David's notch here. As you can see, got a lot of the interior back in just now. Wrapped up all the wiring this morning and got all of the power windows and door locks working. So repaired all of this harness going in through the door jam into the kick panel there. Repaired the passenger side so our door locks and everything are working. Windows work and the bushings and everything else are in great shape, which I noticed when I tested everything. So. This side, we're pretty much ready for vapor barrier to go back on and then the door panel. But first, the tent lady needs to come back and just do the two side windows. Everything else has been done. Just need to do the side windows because they were stuck down due to the wiring before. So all that's good. Got the carpet in earlier. So after all of that wiring was cleaned up, I was able to get the dash frame back in here well not the frame the actual shell so that's been installed and cleaned up a lot of wiring in the harness in the back here you can see i've got these pulled through still from and this is how they had them cut from where the old cluster connectors would be and you can see here this is where they tapped in for some turn signal indicators this is actually the wiring that I've put in here, and I gotta clean these up a little bit. This is for the new Holly dash, which I'm about to show you guys in a minute. And got the radio wired in. So in fact, that I know all should work. The factory, there we go. Um, harness, did the connectors, did a proper uh, faceplate mount here. Got the speakers installed, two in the front, so JBL six and a halfs in the doors, two ways and got some three and a halfs up in the dash they sound really good and of course going to go with the jbl base pro hub as i do in most of these cars now because while well, it fits so nicely down in the spare tire well so let's talk holly screens for a second here i believe i alluded to it in the other video if i didn't my apologies but here we are so before this is what was in the car so we had this mid-range screen, mid-sized, whatever you want to call it. You can see this is where the two window switches were that, uh, well, weren't even working. Here's little turn indicator bulbs that I was talking about earlier. And somebody did a little bit of effort here to get this all mounted in the back and they cut quite a bit of this bezel surround out. So you can see we've got a new one there. And the reason for that is to go up to this massive screen. So in addition, David actually had this little guy as well. So he was technically running two screens and that one was screwed to the dash, which I actually plastic welded the holes shut and did a little bit of plastic work there and painted over it when I redid the um, dash. So the name of the game now is to get this guy plugged in, which I've already gone ahead and cleaned up the wiring on this so i've cut the main power harness to length here is um, a couple of the adapters now this is going to plug into the you know harness and everything that's already in the car so i can actually go ahead and plug this in and uh, should power up be able to show you guys that um, it comes with everything that you need 
in terms of obviously being able to use this. And I'm gonna be mindful to make sure that all our connections for things like data logging and loading USB files and everything else, because it does come with a USB stick. So I'm gonna run this in a creative spot. There's our GPS hookup. So now that we got that plugged in, do our key forward, screen powering up. So there we go, got our screen powered up and I'm hoping to customize this and actually get the turn signal um, indicators integrated into here. I'm assuming somewhere in this wiring, I'm gonna be able to do that. So fingers crossed that that'll work. And there's a whole array of features of fonts and styles and layouts and everything else that you can do with this. But we'll get there once I figure out how to get this mounted into the new bezel. So here is the trim panel that you can buy. And you know, the screen fits in here. So the name of the game is a lot of this is gonna get cut, but I'll end up mounting this to the backside of this new cluster cover. Now this is a new cluster cover from LMR. It actually looks really nice. It doesn't seem cheap. It even has that metal reinforcement guy right here that most people never end up putting the screw through this when they put interiors back together. So that is nice to see. It comes with the rubber along here as well. So not a bad piece. The only thing that of course I'll be doing is once I've got everything sorted out in the screen ready for mounting, I'm gonna prep this and spray it with the proper black. Cause right now it's just kind of a shiny plastic out of the mold finish. So what I need to do is just kind of see how that screen is gonna fit in here. I know some guys have already done it. I feel like I'm probably gonna end up trimming kind of right here, probably a little bit right here and there. And what I want to be able to do is to get that to mount as flush up against there as possible. So I'm probably gonna take this guy home and mess around with that. Um, if I have another cluster cover, I might do it on another one first kind of that whole measure twice, cut once motto. And, um, cause it would suck. These aren't cheap guys. Um, I know this is well over a hundred dollars if I remember correctly. So definitely don't want to be hacking into this and messing it up when we've already got a hacked up one sitting right here. Now, of course we can't use this one cause of where the switches were and they've cut up into here and yeah, just uh, not as nice to look at. Hopefully I can get everything buttoned up and situated here looking good, but I'm really happy with the amount of work that I managed to get done today on the car and to be able to have that dash back in, the center console in, got the triax shifter and no longer that huge B&M T-handle thing. So just need to get them a uh, shift knob for it and stereos in. I don't have it pushed in all the way because I need to run the remote wire still to the back for the Base Pro Hub. And I'm probably gonna end up running a set of RCAs just to avoid me having to tap into the um, rear speaker wires, which I think, no, they are there. So I could technically tap in to these guys um, and use the high level inputs, which I guess I could do that anyways. We'll see what I end up doing. The important thing is that I've got options, right? So that is pretty much it for today. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be it for the video, but either way, stay tuned as the video either continues or you wait for the next episode. So stick around.